Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where a stupid Karen learns a lesson in manners. Our next Reddit post is from Fallen and Burning. So I'm in my early 20s and I work in a call center for a gas company. A few months ago, I had an angry customer call in. Hi, this is company name in city name. My name is OP. Can I take your name, please? Well, OP, I've been waiting a full 20 minutes to speak to someone. For context, 20 minutes is actually fast for our office. I've called today because... I'm sorry, but I didn't catch your name. I need to confirm your account details so I can have a look at your account, please. Do not interrupt me. I'm the customer, and the customer is always right. I pay your wages. Now listen here, young lad. I don't want to hear another word from you. Understood? At this point, I was in stunned silence. That's more like it. Now, I've called today because... Then, the angry customer just rambled on for about 40 minutes nonstop. During this time, I had three coworkers check on me to see if I was okay, because I wasn't exactly the quiet type. I had just been sitting there for 40 minutes with my headset muted, playing Atari Breakout on the Google Images page. After 40 minutes, the customer got to the end of their rant. I paused my game. I had already beat my high score, and I wasn't willing to lose this progress, and I unmuted my headset. So, now I want you to tell me what you're going to do to fix this random billing issue. I was silent. Excuse me? Are you still there? Yep, I'm still here. Well, what are you planning on doing to fix this? Well, this is the wrong department for that. I'm happy to get the number for the right department for you if you'd like. Well, why didn't you think to tell me that at the start of the call? Well, I tried, but you told me to be quiet before I even confirmed your account details. You're an effing idiot! Your entire company is full of morons! I don't appreciate being spoken to like that. If you swear at me again, I'll be forced to end the call. Fine. What's their number? I give the customer the correct number. And do they have the same hours as your department? 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., right? I say, that team is only available from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. At this point, the angry customer realizes that it's now 5.05 p.m. on Friday. What the F? How dare you? Click. I said to my team manager, yeah, I just hung up on her. I did warn them not to swear. Our next Reddit post is from The Floor is Benny Lava. I work for a major cable, internet, TV, and home phone provider. The department that I work in is responsible for either saving a customer or turning their services off. A call came in transferred from our tech support team, and by this time, the customer was already on the phone for an hour. The tech agent was able to get service back up and running, but he was now asking for a large credit for one day of service out. As soon as I got on the phone, he demands, Here's what you're gonna do. If you can't do this, then turn my service off immediately. I no longer want to be a customer. I tried to calmly explain to this very rude man that I couldn't credit him over $200 for one day of service, but I'd be more than happy to process a credit more appropriate. He declined and again demanded that his service be turned off immediately. I ask him, immediately? And he says, yep, right now. Well, cue malicious compliance. I turn off his services right now. He starts screaming that I was watching that and what am I going to do without internet? I told him that I was only doing what he asked. This ended with me restoring service and giving him a credit appropriate for his one day outage, which we figured out was user error on his end. Also, down in the comments, we have this kind of funny exchange from Inquisitive Carrot. My last experience with that kind of thing made me want to bang my head against a wall. Sir, what can we do to retain you as a customer today? Literally nothing. I'm moving out of state to an area where you don't operate. I can offer you our sports value package for such and such amount of money. Our next Reddit post is from MDL. For the past seven to eight years, I've worked in a company in Spain. I've known and worked with the chief technology officer for like 10 years now. He's a cool guy that wants stuff done. Even before 2020, the work from home policy was extremely relaxed. So when the pandemic came, the transition was as easy as it could get. In fact, our company embraced this opportunity and started hiring people from outside the city for a cheaper salary than in the city. But for those people, a higher salary than anyone could get without moving into the city. I also moved out of the city during this time. Since the CTO didn't want to be a sales guy, the company hired a CEO in 2021, an Englishman that came highly recommended and was stationed in his rural house in the English countryside. He seemed like a cool, relaxed guy. 
for a while. Once the pandemic ended, he started pushing rather heavily for a return to office for everyone. He wrote long, lengthy emails to everyone about how this fostered relationships and whatnot. He got really pushy, even complaining to the CTO about it. So, every time he came to Spain, people that lived around the city would go to the office just to be there so the CEO was happy. And then, eventually, the CTO decided that he had enough about return to office and the CEO complaining about it. So, during one random meeting, the CTO said, Okay, next Tuesday, I want everyone in the office. If you live far away, book a train, drive, whatever you have to do. I'll pay, but be here. And so we did. That Tuesday, every single member of the tech team, including people that took a two or three hour trip to get there, was in the office. Guess who wasn't there? Yeah, the CEO. So the CTO took a picture, he mailed it to the CEO saying something like, if you can't lead by example, don't push my people to do things that don't work. And then we blew off the rest of the day to have a relaxing lunch and beers. The aftermath? The return to office mandate never came to fruition. The CEO was out of the company a year later. We closed the office since everyone works 100% of the time from home, and to his dismay, the CTO is now CTO and acting CEO, and things are going smoothly. Our next Reddit post is from Joda Kotby. So, I'm the owner of a landscaping business that my father started. He retired last year. He still checks in and helps me a lot on the business end of things to help me get my footing. We work in a city in South Florida, and about 95% of our customers are above the age of 60. My dad has three clients that we charge a very low rate to because they've used him since the start of his business. Two of these people are great. They understand that they're being charged a low rate, and they love us for it. But we do have one lady who's very hard to deal with. My dad refuses to let go of her contract without a legitimate reason. That's just who my dad is. The lady has two daughters, and they both own homes with their husbands. We get a call from this lady asking us to take on her daughters as clients. I told her that if she would like to give them our number, I can talk to them and get it figured out. Really, I was doing this as a favor to my dad because adding the two extra properties right now stretches us pretty thin, and I'll probably have to help out as well as my cousin who basically manages the crews. Anyone in the landscaping business will tell you that it's extremely difficult to expand your business and take on many customers. So one of the two daughters called in, gave me their details, and told them I could come out and meet them and give them an estimate as soon as possible. When I explained everything to the daughter, this was met with a few seconds of silence, followed by, Uh, my mom told me about the rate that she paid, and we were under the assumption that we'd be paying the same rates. Unfortunately, we won't be able to do that, ma'am. We gave your mom a special discount for being a customer for so long. Well, I'm sure my mom won't be happy to hear about this. I say, okie dokie, and after she yelled at me, she hung up the phone. I didn't really think anything of it, and later, me and my dad had a laugh together about how entitled the people are where we live. Later that night, I got a call from the mother. She started... Let me explain something to you. We have a way of doing things in this town, and you just broke rule number one. The customer is always right. You told me you would take on my daughters, and I expect you to do just that. Ma'am, I told your daughters I could take them on, but not at the same rate as you. I never told you I'd be charging them the same rate as you. Yes, you absolutely did, and I expect you to hold to your word like your father would. He would be so disappointed in you right now. Okay, ma'am, I'll see what I can do. You better. This is just not how you do business with me. Okay. I told my dad about the interaction, and he told me to just end her contract. I told him I had a better idea, and he agreed with me. So I call her back the next day and say, Hello, Miss Such and Such. This is your landscaping company calling you back. I hope you have some good news because I still feel slighted. Oh, I have some news. We'll be giving your daughters the same rate as you, as you insisted. Perfect. When can I tell them you'll be over? We'll get to that. But first, we have to discuss your new rates. What new rates? I didn't agree to new rates. Oh, well, you requested to pay the same amount as your daughter's, so we've taken away the special discount we've given you, and your new rate will be 800 bucks a month. This new rate will start in two months. What came after was incoherent screaming and her hanging up. 
She called us back the next day, but she refused to talk to me. She tried talking to my cousin, but he referred her to me. She tried getting a hold of my dad, but he shut down his work cell phone long ago. She eventually called back and tried to negotiate with me, but I told her that this new rate was at her request and it's too late to go back on it. She dropped us the next month. She had been a thorn in my dad's side for so long. He was relieved when I told him about the call. He didn't want to have the extra stress of dealing with her anyways. Our next Reddit post is from Momo-chan. I work at a small Chinese restaurant that generally only has locals and regulars with the odd visit from out of the area. Because it's so small, on a normal day or night, we'll only have one waitress on a shift. We were having a relatively quiet night, so I was sitting around pouring soy sauce into bottles and cleaning chili jars. This table of four people walk in, and they're all relatively nice, and I give them the good old casual greeting and sit them down. They do their stuff and order their meal, and for drinks, they only get table water, which is normal. When I bring out their food, one of the customers, an old man, asks for a bottle of red wine. Now, we don't serve alcohol at this restaurant. I'm not even 18 yet, so I couldn't even handle the alcohol if we did. I told him that we don't have any alcohol, and he goes into a rage, pointing at a bottle that we had on the shelf. I knew what he was pointing to, our Chinese vinegar. Now, these bottles look remarkably like Asian alcohol. They look like wine bottles, and the writing is in Chinese. I told him, sir, that's vinegar, not wine. He went into this alcoholic rage, yelling about how I couldn't know what alcohol was because I'm underage, and that I was hiding alcohol from him, and he would make a complaint on our Facebook page. His kids and wife looked embarrassed, and they were trying to just hide themselves. And his wife gave me a look that just said, just do it and he'll regret it. So I went and got a bottle of the vinegar and put it on the table. The old man makes a really big deal out of it, saying stuff like, Oh, wasn't that easy? Waitresses in my day would have done it in two seconds. I walked away from him, and when I turned around to check, he spat a mouthful of vinegar out onto his plate and was trying to wash out the taste of Chinese vinegar with water. To be fair, the wife did come up to me later and apologize for his idiocy. They never complained about us on Facebook. And they had to pay an extra 20 bucks for the bottle since we couldn't use it again. Now, I realize this story sends up a red flag because you might be thinking, hey, if he pours himself a glass of vinegar, then surely he'd be able to smell that it's vinegar before drinking it, right? Well, my dad used to tell me about my grandpa, who I never met in person, that he was a pretty bad alcoholic, actually, and he drank a fifth of vodka every night, which, if you don't know, is 750 milliliters, and drinking that much just completely obliterated his sense of smell. He literally couldn't smell anything. He had almost no sense of taste as well, and in fact, he developed a taste for hot peppers because it was one of the few things that he could actually taste in food, so he would just chow down on raw hot peppers. So, it stands to reason that, yeah, that customer might not have been able to smell that it was vinegar before drinking it. Our next Reddit post is from OK Temperature. I work as an industrial painter who paints machinery. Typically, whenever I get a job, they tell me what paint to use in color. But on this day, I got an atypical job in which they wanted me to use water-based paint, latex, on a carbon steel job. Now, I went to my boss and told her this won't work because the paint will make it rust, and she said, I don't care, just use the paint. They're gonna be here next week. I got her to write down what paint she wanted me to use and have her sign the document, and I said sure. If you don't understand, putting water on a rustable metal is generally a bad idea because the rust will ruin not only the paint job, but possibly weaken the metal itself. So I did my job. After a day of prep work, I painted it, let it sit for a couple of days to dry, and then cured it. A week after that, my boss came up to me expressing how horrible the paint job looks because the rust was showing through the metal. I said that I followed your instructions to the letter and told her again that water and air will make metal rust. After a little back and forth, she conceded that she was in the wrong, but asked me how we fix it. I explained that our best option was to just sandblast it to get all the paint off and then use an oil-based paint. So then I had to repaint the thing all over again. That was our slash malicious compliance. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.